It was it was something hey hey ho ho about Ho Chi Minh. They loved Ho Chi Minh. Do you remember what Jane Fonda did? Posing with an anti-aircraft gun with the North Vietnamese? Well, let me tell you something. They're now running and ruining America. But Barack Obama, the reason I bring up Ho Chi Minh is that Barack Obama reminds me of Ho Chi Minh, by the way. Uh, kind of tall, somewhat lean, elegant in his speech, articulate in his speech, and a total zealot for his cause. In that regard, we have Ho Chi Minh in the White House in some regard, don't we? That's correct. That's correct. And when Jane Fonda comes on the TV, I thought, I can't turn, turn it off. And I can't... Let me ask you this. Before you go, Joe, do you ever, in your PTSD, get enraged and pick up that gun and wave it at anyone? Oh, no. Have no. you ever threatened anyone with your gun that no one knows about? Have you waved it at your girlfriend? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely no. So, So here's what I want to know. When you feel rage coming over you, and you have weapons in your house, why don't you reach for the weapon? What prevents you from reaching for the gun? I'm saying I, I wouldn't hurt anyone unless they were coming in, they were going to harm uh, my kids or myself in my house. All right, so there you go. Well, now try telling that to a goon in the FBI when they send an investigator, some 22-year-old pimply girl from NYU, who will now work for the FBI in the gun check department. Go tell that to some child raised on Adderall, that you're not a dangerous man, you're just a patriot who wants to protect his family. See what the girl from NYU has to say to you, Joe, because that's the America that Obama has in mind for you. Joe, although it's 2016 and Christmas has just left us, I'm going to send you a book for a patriot, which is Government Zero. Because whether you know it or not, I have an entire number of pages about gun control in that book. I sadly predicted this very day in Government Zero. And I'm not going to read from it today, but I want you to have that. Now let's talk about guns that they're not going to catch. The unlicensed guns that are all over America. And let's talk about the gangs and the housing projects and elsewhere. Why don't they go and seize them? There's gun violence every day. There are shootouts. Ask the police in your neighborhood which neighborhoods they won't go near. And, of course, they'll say they won't go near the neighborhoods where the gangs have automatic weapons, illegally, by the way. So why doesn't the president, who wants to control violence in the country, why doesn't he order the National Guard to go into these housing projects and go door to door, get a law written by Loretta Lynch, she's good at writing laws, give him some uh, law that she can come up with, and go in, break the doors down, and take the guns away. And then compensate the families for breaking the door down. I think that would go a long way toward controlling violence, wouldn't it? Think about it. If you really want to control gun violence, why don't you start with this, the most violence coming from guns? Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C. We're going to do more to help those suffering from mental illness get the help that they need. So... High-profile mass shootings tend to shine a light on those few mentally unstable people who inflict harm okay. on others. But so now it's about mental illness. At the same, uh, here's the headline for today: Germans stock up on weapons for self-defense as a result of an indisputable net nationwide spike in migrant-driven crime, including rapes of German women and girls on a shocking scale by Muslim immigrants, as well as physical assaults stabbings, home invasions, robberies, and burglaries throughout Germany as a result of the psychotic Merkel who is flooding her country with criminals. An influx of more than one million asylum seekers from Africa, Asia, and the Middle East is overwhelming Germany. The Germans are rushing to arm themselves. Germany is a country with some of the most stringent gun control laws in Europe, and yet there is a demand for non-lethal self-defense weapons Anything they can get their hands on. Pepper spray, gas pistols, flare guns, electroshock weapons, animal repellents. Because of the immigrant-driven surge in violent crimes, rapes, robberies, assaults in cities and towns throughout Germany. And yet the authorities in Germany, just like in America, are arguing that the German citizenry's sudden interest in self-defense has nothing whatsoever to do with mass migration into the country. 
despite evidence to the contrary. And so at the same time, we in America need weapons more than ever to arm ourselves, to protect ourselves from the flood of illegal aliens coming from around the globe, not all of whom, but some of whom are very violent, very violent, uncivilized, you name it. At the very same time, he's coming up with methods to take away your right to self-defense. Now, let's talk about the new gun control rule on the doctor-patient relationship. Confidentiality will no longer be protected, doctors. So if you're a liberal doctor, get ready for this one. If you deem an individual to be a physical threat or someone capable of violence to, towards others, you can now report that individual to the FBI. And so that means people will not come to see you for fear that you will report them to the FBI, whether they are violent or not. You can say that I'm violent when I'm not because you don't like my politics. That's the Soviet Union, liberal doctor. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. For mental illness, get the help that they need. <laughs> so, hey, way to go, High Doc. High-profile mass shootings tend to shine a light on those few mentally unstable people who inflict harm on others, but the truth wow. is that nearly two in three gun deaths are from suicides. Oh, hmm. So a lot of our work is... To prevent mm. people from hurting themselves. Oh, that's, that's so why we made sure that the Affordable Care Act, also known Chairman as Obama, Obama. thank you. For <laughs> Finally, uh, all right. So the con man today did things that no one, most people couldn't imagine. I wrote about it in Government Zero, and I'm not going to read from the book. But let's focus on the new gun control rule about mental uh, illness because it's forever going to change the doctor-patient relationship. There will be no confidentiality from here forward. This is exactly as it was in the Soviet Union. And if a psychologist says that someone is a physical threat or capable of violence, that could be anybody, to a liberal psychiatrist or therapist, anyone who comes to see them is capable of violence. They're all paranoid. By definition, anyone in the mental health professions is, by them def self-definition, a paranoid individual. They may think that they're balanced, but you know, and I know, many people in those fields, and some of them are wonderful people, I have them in my own family and I love them dearly, uh, are themselves struggling with issues, but they're now going to be the gods and the judges of who's capable of violence, and they will now have, have to report that individual to the FBI. So that means that people will no longer go to counseling because they fear that the doctor will report them to the FBI, whether they're violent or not. Secondly, the definition of someone who is mentally ill, what does that mean? That's quite broad, quite expansive. Everyone knows uh, what a mentally ill person or a violent person looks like, right? But you do know that there are mentally ill people who don't evidence signs of mental illness. You do know that. We see that in the higher reaches of government on a daily basis. In fact, most people who have a madness for power are mentally ill by my definition. Any person who would have an, obsess an obsession to rule over others against the will of the others is a mentally ill person. So what is a mentally ill person? If you're anxious, is that mental illness? If you're depressed, is that a mental illness? What if they show no harm to hurt any others? Should they also lose their right to own a firearm because they're anxious or depressed? They will. Because I know how the government works. You give the government an ounce of power, they take a pound of power. You understand that? The bureaucracy snowballs. And the little people who go into government work will then take advantage of any law they have on their hands to crush you. Whether it be a zoning situation in your hometown. You ever try to build a fence in your hometown? You ever try to put an addition on your house in your hometown? Did you? Did you see what happens when a little person with a little power comes around to your house and says, you can't put that fence on, you can't go a foot higher, you can't go a foot deeper, you can't put this on your house, you can't put a second floor on without this little person's approval? That's how law works. And that's what will happen with this gun control law. And we'll all lose as a result. So I, I'm trying to broaden the discussion slightly to show you what might happen. And this is a new world that we're in right now. It's a world that's not uh, unexpected. We expected this to come from the vampire. I told you Count Obamula 
seem to have become to me a vampire who drinks the blood of the Constitution one sip at a time. And the reason he had tears today was that he was sated from the pint of blood he drank from the Constitution, drinking an entire amendment. Think about that. Think about that. How good that must have tasted. He practically ran his wrist over his mouth after his speech because finally his fangs had sank deep enough for a taste of the blood of the Constitution. He had only been sipping at it today. He took a big drink because it's in his last year. So we think. So what do we have to say about guns now, huh? Or you crazy right-wing nuts with your love of guns and God and Constitution? We should take that Constitution away from you. It was written by old white men. Well, what's got a Constitution? It's not a black thing. It's not an immigrant thing. It was a thing written for slaveholders. It's darn well time to get rid of that old Constitution itself. That's what we need to do is get rid of that Constitution. It's an old white thing. That's the next thing that we're going to do is help those suffering from constitutional illness. Those old white men who are still hanging on to that scrap of paper, we're going to help them. Yeah, we're going to help them get over that. So now go back to the sound mic, is what I say to myself, from the back of my mind to the front of my mind to you. We're going to play some more of Count Obamula. Uh, but be, oh, but before that, I'm sorry, we have the treat that I promised you, which I'll be running every day now, probably until the end of 2016. This is Elena Kagan, Supreme Court Justice, during her confirmation hearings when the wobbly left-wing fanatic Senator Leahy, Leaky Leahy, we call him affectionately, another nut from Vermont. When Leaky Leahy marched her out for her confirmation hearing, the number one issue that was on the minds of the putative conservative Republicans was guns and Second Amendment. And so Leahy comes from a gun, a gun owner state, Vermont, where so the crackers still use guns to go hunting. And he had to pretend that he cares about that, just as the imposter from Brooklyn uh, Senator Sanders does. I love that one. He's a, uh, as much a Vermonter as, uh, let's see, uh, I'm trying to come up with the right analogy. He Don't just say he's a carpetbagger. Let's say that Bernie Sanders is a, every time he speaks, he's from Vermont. He represents Vermont. No, he represents Brooklyn, New York, and those from Brooklyn who moved to Vermont and ruined the state and took over Burlington. The hippies, in other words, who fled New York after destroying it with their liberalism, moved to Vermont, destroyed Burlington, and then elected one of their own. So now this idiot represents Vermont. So as the other idiot from Vermont, Leahy, introduced Kagan, you got to hear the charade on established law on the Savage Nation. Is there any doubt uh, after the court's decision in Heller and McDonald that the Second Amendment to the Constitution secures a fundamental right for an individual to own a firearm, use it for self-defense in their home? There is no doubt, Senator Leahy, that is binding precedent, entitled to all the respect uh, of binding precedent in, in, in any case. So that is settled law. Settled law. Never forget it's settled law. I'm not just mocking her accent. She sounds like one of my relatives that I ran away from. But it is settled law. Even Kagan knows it's settled law. But we'll have to see what happens when it's taken to the Supreme Court again. We'll see if Miss Settled Law really believes a set of law, or she was just saying it was set of law in order to be ushered into the Supreme Court, where in my day, the most two Carvel stands in Queens. Now she's on the Supreme Court. That's, so that's the new world we live in. That's the new world. Like in communist China, they took peasants from the uh, countryside and made them doctors. They were, it wasn't just doctors without borders. The communists wanted to prove that all doctors were elitists in China, in Mao's China. And so they said, to you, you're really not a doctor. You fake the system. It was for the elites. So we're going to take this little girl from the countryside, this illiterate peasant girl, and she is now going to be the doctor. And you, Mr. Surgeon in Communist China, we're throwing you down into the laundry to punish you because you are a bourgeois anti-communist. You're now going to clean, uh, you're going to clean sheets in the laundry of this hospital, which is exactly what happened in Communist China. And today a similar analogy can be made as to who we put on Supreme Courts, uh, who has positions of power in America, very much an analogy to what went on, in, in, in my mind, to communist China. I know it's not as overt. I know it's not a direct parallel. But you understand that there's a little bit of an analogy here that uh, some people can pick up on. That's called the Cultural Revolution, which I've talked about to a great extent on this program and described in, in Government Zero. 
and which, by the way, I'm expanding on right now. It's a topic I'm expanding on because it's very important to me. What's happened to America, and this is a sidetrack from the gun thing, 